From the Watchtower, May 15th, 2008. While you are young, choose to serve Jehovah. This study is a call to the children of Jehovah's Witnesses. What we will discover is the darker side of child baptism and its effects on the people of this religion. Let's start in paragraph 2. You young ones in the Christian congregation, have you made a dedication to Jehovah? Many may find the choice to serve the true God difficult to make. The Watchtower actually condemns infant baptism, such as practiced by the Catholic Church. Notice the reasons why. Baptizing an infant is wrong because a baby cannot understand, make a decision, and become a disciple. Those baptized during Philip's ministry in Samaria were men and women, not mere infants. Baptism is for those old enough to learn, believe, and exercise faith. Since baptism is such a vital step, would baptism of young children be much different than infant baptism? Look at how the Watchtower features very young children as examples. The preteen son of an elder sincerely wanted to get baptized, so his father had three other elders discuss with the youngster the questions designed for those contemplating baptism. Their conclusion was that, though quite young, he qualified to be baptized as an ordained minister of Jehovah God. Why, attending the Pioneer Service School in the Bahamas recently was a 10-year-old baptized girl. Since her baptism at age 11. One young man from El Salvador who, at the age of 10, submitted to baptism. At age 11, he symbolized his dedication to Jehovah by water baptism. In fact, there is no biblical example of any youth baptism. Even Jesus was 30 years old when he was baptized. So why hurry children into baptism? Why not wait until they are adults? The question becomes even more puzzling when you compare the Watchtower's advice on marriage. The advice is to wait. The Bible sets no minimum age for marriage, but it does recommend that before marrying, one should be past the bloom of youth. Why? Because such young people are just in the early stages of developing the emotional maturity, self-control, and spiritual qualities necessary to handle married life. And here the Watchtower makes a specific example of immature ages for marriage, the same ages that they recommend for baptism. Did you have the same values at 13 that you had at 5, or the same values at 20 that you had at 13? Has your understanding and appreciation for life grown or lessened as you have gained greater experience over the years? Is it not often true that the only boy in a girl's life when she is 16 or 17 years old is long forgotten as she grows to womanhood and attaches greater importance to a man's godly traits and personality? So why does the Watchtower ignore the Bible and its own advice on maturity when baptizing teenagers and preteens, some as young as 9 and 10 years? Because after baptism, in which the person pledges association with God's spirit-directed organization, that child can no longer choose to leave the religion without severe consequences, namely disfellowshipping. The awake admits, A lot of young people hesitate to get baptized because they fear it's a final step that they can't back out of. They feel that if they do something wrong, they'll be put out of the congregation. Imagine shunning a child. God's Word commands Christians not to keep company or fellowship with a person who has been expelled from the congregation. A simple hello to someone can be the first step that develops into a conversation and maybe even a friendship. Would we want to take that first step with a disfellowshipped person? Witness children are raised in a closed environment and only allowed to develop relationships with other Jehovah's Witnesses. They're programmed to become productive members. In the early years, put before your children theocratic goals, regular pioneering, Bethel service, or missionary work. Encourage your children to auxiliary pioneer during school vacations. Critical thought is repressed, leaving only information favorable to Jehovah's Witnesses. Each day, parents are confronted with the task of finding out what has been planted in their children's minds uprooting what is wrong and replacing it with the wholesome truths found in God's Word. As defined by the Watchtower. Meanwhile, Jehovah's Witnesses put on a different face when confronted about their child-rearing policies. This guide, Preparing for Child Custody Cases, printed by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, coaches witness children what to say. Be careful that they don't get the impression that they are in a demonstration at the circuit assembly when they would show that the first things in life are service and going to the Kingdom Hall. Be careful they don't all say that they are going to be pioneers. They must be clean, moral, honest, but with the interests that you would expect from other young people. 
Many witness youth resist the pressure to get baptized. The longer they wait, the more the pressure builds, and the pressure is real. It is not enough simply to believe the Bible truths you have been taught, nor is it enough to simply tag along with your parents to Christian meetings. Those desiring salvation must dedicate themselves to God and do His will. If you are a child of Jehovah's Witnesses, be very careful about committing to baptism. Look outside the organization for information, because the Watchtower is not telling you everything. Even if you choose not to become a witness, you'll still have your family. Probably your religion was decided for you by your place of birth, over which you had no control. Surely nothing is lost by examining what the Bible says about God. Watchtower Comments is produced by an active member of Jehovah's Witnesses. This video is not authorized or endorsed by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society.